Innovation is much more about saying no than to say yes. And you have to say no even to rather good ideas. Gregor Joachim, welcome to this episode of Architecture Corner. Thank you. Thank you, Casimir. Uh, Gregor, you have been at several conferences about innovation lately. Could you please tell us about them? Well, so um, I was at uh, IBM Interconnect in Las Vegas a few weeks ago, which was a conference about cloud, IoT, and uh, inevitably about innovation. Uh, because I think that's what's enabled by, by those things, and that's what they are asking for. Uh, yesterday I was at uh, InnoDay uh, in Stockholm, which is a conference where Captain and I was the main sponsor, uh, where there were many interesting discussions about innovation and what it really means in practice for companies. I think you can say that innovation is the uh, constant flow of change in a way. Uh, just changing in itself one time is not enough, but having a continuous change flow. We always improve and we continue to improve. Uh, one of the problems with innovation is that what in, is innovative today and for you is not tomorrow. There, there is always a need of improvement and continuous pushing the limits, so to say. I think innovation is different for different people and, and I've studied a bit of, of uh, a little bit in business school, but I'm mostly an engineer and I, I know that uh, innovation has a very specific meaning in, in uh, business, which is maybe a bit different from the meaning it has in engineering. I think one of the misconceptions of innovation, especially within engineering, is that it, it's some kind of invention, that you just invent stuff uh, rather than the process and the, the way that you actually improve the business in the, in the long run. Gregor. How do you help clients with innovation? What are the problems they had that you try to solve? Everyone wants to be innovative. Everyone has ideas about how to be innovative. The problem that most companies have is that it's hard to be innovative because there is so much that keeps them in their old tracks. One thing is, of course, the technology, but much about the process, the way that you actually behave as a company. Uh, the headroom for innovation is almost very low, so there is, uh, might be ideas uh, that you can come up with something that you might be able to do, but then actually doing it, it becomes a tight burden. Joachim, what are the challenges that you and the clients have when trying to innovate? You can see it on, on two different levels. Uh, one thing would be to actually get good ideas that would improve business and drive those uh, forward to, to something that you can solve and to also have a broad spectrum of, of ideas that you funnel down into the, what you can actually and then de deliver on. So getting from idea until the actual uh, delivery, that's one challenge or one area of challenges. Normally when we talk about innovation, it is something about mobile, it's something about web, something about cloud, something in, in the front end of the modern port right now. But sooner or later you come to the point where you need to integrate, you need to have whatever you have behind the scenes, whatever you have in the background needs to be integrated. And the time that you need to change, uh, doing a, I mean, doing a, in, in the cloud world, you can, you can talk about minutes, days, hours, very uh, short time frames. But the, in other parts of the systems, you can talk about weeks, months, quarters. So the time and the pace in, in this different part of the uh, solutions are very different. And that becomes a, a problem. I agree with you. Uh, well, you said you need to funnel down the ideas. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, there are unlimited number of ideas. There are so many ideas. And Indeed. What, what can you do with them? Most of them uh, you cannot do a lot with. So you need to, to find only the best ideas. So innovation is much more about saying no than to say yes. And you have to say no even to rather good ideas because only the best ones are worth investing in. But how do you know they are the best ones? Well, mm -hmm. you have to try them in reality. You have to find a way of trying, failing and trying something new. Yeah, you need, you need to allow for prototyping. You need to allow for this investigation. And I think the mindset needs to change, going from this perfect world where you have a perfect specification, you have to go to the perfect solution, and rather be in some kind of a better mode, in this constant better, I'm always trying to do something. And what proves itself worthy, I will go forward with. What is not really as good as it might have seen on the, on the drawing board, scrap it, and scrap it fast. That's really important. Try it, but take it out, if it doesn't work. Uh, Joachim, uh, you work a lot with legacy. And mm. I think legacy, I mentioned that there are things that keep 
companies from being innovative and legacy in the terms of software. Yep. Many companies have thousands upon thousands of applications that run, that are the operating system of the company. Mm -hmm. So uh, changing uh, anything means also changing all that legacy. And it's like a heavy burden, a heavy backpack they're carrying, pulling behind yep. themselves. Yep. So that is a big uh, challenge. Uh, but another big challenge is that the entire company, not just the IT, is perfectly evolved to do whatever they are doing right now. Yeah, that's actually, I discussed with one client today about this specific problem that, that when you look at the requirements for a change, you want to do something, in this case, innovative, uh, you are very much limited uh, from the operational view. This is what we do it, and this is what I see I can do. And I can take one step, or perhaps two step into the future, but taking the long term, that we're actually losing yourself from what you have, and uh, imagine something that would be doable and would, would be feasible, it is very hard for most people, because they are very much tied down to the way you do it. Gregor, what is needed to succeed with innovation in your mind? I, I think that, that uh, like with anything else, what is needed to succeed with innovation is passion. That you really want to be successful. And, but it's not just about passion, it's about having a culture of high quality, high performance in the company. It's about having all the things you need in place to be successful, the right processes, the right working methods, the right quality, uh, but you also need to have a culture where it's allowed to, to fail. Uh, and you need to have excellent relationships with your customers because you know, they are the people that decide if your innovation is good or not. But you also need to have excellent relationships with your suppliers because in the end, you are just the tip of the iceberg in the value chain. You add a little bit, but all the suppliers before you uh, add maybe the big part. You also need to have a culture within the company of one thing I said, uh, allowing failure, allowing that you try out and, uh, and you close down as soon as possible. But you also need to have a, a, some kind of um, culture in, in place that is allowing for and promoting continuous improvement, that you always change, you always uh, improve, uh, whatever it might be within the, the way you develop uh, systems, the way that you're testing out, the way you deploy, whatever it might be, that you always improve, that you always build uh, on what you have. So having these constant small changes, constant small improvements, rather than the big bangs, that is something you need to implement as well. So, so in essence, to, to be able to, to do innovation in a company, you need to shift the mindset. Going from the big things, the big changes, into small, fine grain, small changes, and always improve and always take the small steps. I think that's very crucial. How did it go? Were there any new innovation at your clients? Uh, most of you have heard about my work with uh, PostNord. It's been rather uh, publicized and... Uh, well, in that case, we were able to develop uh, two new services, uh, IT services, uh, to help their customers uh, in uh, 11 working days. So that was quite fast. I can bring one, one example also from the logistics uh, industry um, a few years back, where we actually were able to, for a, I mean, this is an industry with, with very low margin. Uh, they, they are pulling stuff from point to point, and it's very, very tough competition. But in this case, by looking at the data and looking at the value of data, we came very fast into a position where we were able to sell the information around the transport, actually getting more paid for the information than for tra transport itself. And we were coming to the point with, with this client that we actually were discussing whether the freight might be for free. So the actual basic service that uh, there is a very hard competition in goes for free, but the value and the money comes in from the data around it. So where, if you want to know where a package is, you have to pay extra? That's for example, that, 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 that part is a very basic uh, information. When you're a big company and you buy lots of transportation, having the fine grain details of what transportation was done, all the small, small things actually have, have a big value. When you buy more services and more transportation, then you have a very good basis for negotiations. So actually give an insight into the details of transportation give this client a very, very good advantage. So that kind of information we were, we were able to sell. Gregor and Joachim, do you have uh, some final advice to the listeners? I think the, the main thing is you know, to, to get started and, and try doing things, not waiting until you have everything in place. Just start. What's the worst that can happen? Yes, exactly. Just start. And the next thing is, innovation is not a one-off. It's not th something you do once or just try it. You have a process for it. You need to have it continuously. But start it, for sure. Just start it. And then make sure it continues. 
Thank you very much for sharing your experience about innovation. Thank you, Casimir. It was nice to be here again. Thank you. Thank you for watching this episode of Architecture Corner. Welcome back for a new episode next week. And the topics for this season are security, innovation and talent. Looking forward to that. Indeed. We'll do that.